Every so often a product is created that helps us in life and makes things easier for us. Sometimes a product is created where it helps us medically and that is the case today. We are talking with Dr. Win Chang who is not only an orthopedic surgeon but an inventor of a new device that will help those who are struggling with shoulder pain or potentially recovery from shoulder injury. And Dr. Chang, thanks so much first of all for coming in on the show. Thank you very much, Charlie. Uh, this is uh, an exciting revelation, uh, a new invention that uh, deals specifically with the shoulder and specifically the rotator cuff and the four muscles that deal with the rotator cuff. That's correct. Uh, the uh, inception of this idea came about 12 years ago when I was playing with my daughter with a cat toy. And uh, after I was playing with this cat toy, I felt that my shoulder was uh, immensely uh, tired and painful and in spite of by myself keeping myself in shape. And then I realized uh, that uh, there are really uh, two ways of exercising the shoulder. There's one way that traditionally was, was taught by the orthopedic community, by the physical therapists and by personal trainers, being the, uh, the four moves that you, you push, you lift, you press, and, and you pull. But I came to realize that it really does not specifically focus on the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff are a specialized group of four muscles that they go into the shoulder. The purpose of that is to stabilize the shoulder so that the shoulder can move in an effective manner. The rotator cuff, as it states, it rotates the shoulder. So the, in order to be really selective to target training and strengthening of the rotator cuff, the individual must do the functional type of exercise to rotate the shoulder. So that's how I came up with my idea of the rotational training rather than the linearly training program. And there's nothing like this on the market, right? No, no, it's a patented, an international patented, and also I have a, a device that is uh, really the only device that is a, around that electronically tracks the power output of the shoulder because uh, I have uh, had needles inserted into my own muscle, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, converted the number of muscular contractions to how fast one can use the shoulder sphere. Because as a person uh, lifts any object, then we call it work. Uh, for instance, uh, we uh, throw a five ounce baseball 60 feet. So the work involved is how uh, much we have to move the weight, the distance. So the weight times the distance is a, a foot pound of energy, we call it. And then the concept is uh, how fast you're gonna throw it. That is power. So one is work, is how much work you do. The other is how fast you do it. So you throw that 40 miles per hour, it's different amount of power as if the individual throws that 80 miles per hour. So this electronic device guides and trains the competitive athletes into the power output so they can understand, be assured that they have trained to meet the power demand that is necessary for certain sporting activity and uh, this can be translationally uh, utilized for boxers mm -hmm. and for tennis players, for baseball players, for water skiers, so for any sport that uh, require the repetitive use of the upper extremity, this can be translated into that. So really uh, uh, my mission uh, in terms of uh, the, the entire reason why I do this is I really, you know, having been an orthopedic surgeon for the past 25 years and more, I come to a point I realized that I was really working as a firefighter. Mm -hmm. When the house is on fire, we as surgeons, we go in there, we fix things up, we put out the fire. But I think it is uh, more important and much more beneficial for the individual to empower themselves so they can prevent the house from catching on fire first. Right. And the uh, shoulder problem is one of the most common uh, problems that we see as physicians. Close to five million people visit doctors every year because of shoulder problem. Wow. And 50% of them are related to the rotator cuff. And the single most important reason why anybody has shoulder pain are related to either, either you have a stiff shoulder or you have a weak rotator cuff. And uh, so it's 
critical for the individual to understand how to strengthen and maintain the rotator cuff in order to uh, minimize uh, the injuries that occur. Yeah, we'll show you uh, on the video, you'll, you'll see how it's being used and we have illustrations of that. But I think what I, I like about it most is that there's an audio cue. So this is, this is the way what you should be hearing, right. right? But if you're not doing it right or if your muscle shuts down, you hear that. Correct. And then that lets you know that you've got to modify and, and change gears to get it back into. Correct. Major difference in terms of the rotational training is that one is it's a rotational training. So when you do the rotational training, it selectively targets the rotator cuff as opposed to any of the push, pull, lift, and press type of exercise where it does not. The rotator cuff uh, in all daily functional activities that work as a stabilizer. It is like the hinge for the door to allow the door to open and close. Mm -hmm. You have a Tight hinge, the door opens and closes smoothly. Loose hinge, wobbly door. Weak rotator cuff, loose shoulder. Right. So the, by doing the rotational training, you convert the rotator cuff into the main driver and the other muscle groups become the stabilizer. So you sort of have a role reversal. And uh, what is the difference in terms of the uh, muscular uh, efficiency of workout? Again, with my own uh, electrical, uh, electrical studies on my own shoulder, it is 200% difference in terms of the selective training of the muscle when you reverse the, uh, uh, the, the output of the muscle. And then the, so the wrist is locked in position. So the only way to rotate the ball with the wrist locked in comes from the shoulder has to rotate mm -hmm. because the elbow only goes up and down. So this is not only just a visual cue, you see the ball spin while you're spinning, but you also hear the ball spinning. But if the ball bounces up and down, that means that the rotator cuff is weak. Yeah. So the goal of the individual is to maintain the rotational movements of the, of the ball. So one is for endurance, and uh, the mission is uh, to educate the public uh, in a safe, effective, efficient manner to strengthen the rotator cuff in selective uh, fashion. And so this way, for the, uh, the athletes, they can perform better, avoiding injury. Patients can recover faster mm -hmm. with greater ease. And for everybody else, for the every average individuals, reduce 50% the chance of you ever having shoulder pain in your lifetime. And there's a potential cost savings of over $40,000 if the, uh, an individual with a rotator cuff here undergoes a, a surgery, physical therapy, MRIs, the cost is enormous. And uh, you look at the cost burden for the economy and for individual lost time of work. And then I have patients who need their family members or their friends to, so you're talking about two people, to uh, one person lost time of work to drive uh, the individual to, to, to see the doctors and the other individual uh, with the pain and the medication. For baseball players, uh, we, uh, commonly we hear about Tommy Johns with the elbow uh, injury after uh, surgery to repair the uh, Tommy John for the ligament in the elbow, probably two thirds of them eventually do return to competitive level, but after a year or two years out. But with those individuals with an actual rotator cuff here, less than 3% ever return. Really? Uh, and you, you have a great model here that shows exactly why it's important for those muscles to be able to be strong, to kind of hold the shoulder in place. Correct. The shoulder is different from any other joint in the body because it offers the greatest mobility. Because of the great mobility involved, you have to sacrifice the stability. The hip joint is very stable because it has a socket around it and then the, the, the hip does not move out. But in the shoulder, there's no socket. It really is just a, a, a hemispheric uh, ball over here that is uh, met with this uh, little disc. This is almost, if you reverse it, looks like a golf ball on a tee. Yeah. Very unstable. Right. So the only way to stabilize it is what we call a fourth couple. Requires two types of muscles in order to move the shoulder. First muscle is the rotator cuff that they wrap around the top. They have to pull it in, suck it in, and in a dynamic fashion. Once it's a pulled in, secure in position, then you can have the other 13 muscles, the trapezius, the deltoid, all the power groups that they come down below and they can lift the arm up. Because in order to lift it up, you have to stabilize it. Mm -hmm. And the problem with the injury in the shoulder is because weakness in the rotator cuff. So when one moves with an inefficient 
rotator cuff, the shoulder moves upward. And with the abnormal motion, either upward or backwards, with throwing to the front and so forth, they create injury to the bumper ligaments, what they call the labrum. Yeah. You know, the, a lot of athletes have labral tear, very common. That's all because of uh, the inefficiency of the rotator cuff. Loose hinge, wobbly door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Weak rotator cuff, unstable shoulder. Right. And uh, then the, furthermore, the next stage will be what they call impingement. Impingement tendonitis, well known about impingement. That's because of uh, the shoulder is moving in abnormal fashion. Eventually leads to rotator cuff tear. And you're talking about uh, expensive uh, recovery and time. Sure, yeah. All right, so um, you're in production now, we know that. Uh, it's an international device being used by some very prominent athletes and athletic programs. Right. Um, I can say the Yankees, the right. Atlanta Braves, right. there are players on there who are using right. this already. Uh, for those people here in the Hudson Valley, which right. I think it's great because you're a Hudson Valley guy, you right. live in the Hudson right. Valley, we've got an inventor right here. Right. Um, where can people get more information about shoulders? Uh, they can be uh, obtained, uh, right now, the, uh, the information is available on my website. Uh, it's uh, uh, shouldersphere.com, www.shouldersphere.com, or they can reach me personally, and I would love to uh, communicate with the community because uh, my mission is to really educate the public in terms of how to, uh, the proper way to exercise, and uh, I win shouldersphere.com. All right, great. Dr. Chang, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Wow.